Good morning, everyone. I'm back with a video to follow up on yesterday's estimating match points technique. So what I did was I went to Google Sheets and in column B here, I entered what my estimates were as we played the hands. And column C is I went back into bridge base to my tournament results. We ended up with 60.8 in the game actually, which still surprised me that it was that high. Uh, I had initially estimated 50%. And I took the individual scores from each board and entered them into this spreadsheet so that I could come up with a delta column. And delta is just how far the board ended up, how far the difference between how the board ended up and what I felt about the board, what that magnitude was. And a good example of something deliberate that you can go through to get much better at this is if you'll look at a couple of the boards that you were off on the farthest in each direction, and then kind of go back and do an autopsy on the board and figure out why you were off by so much. So if we take this data here, I'm just gonna sort it by Delta. Let's call them D, Z to A. And let's take a look at boards 11 and six in the positive direction. These boards actually ended up being much better than I thought they were at the time. And in the other direction, we will go with boards three and board five. I guess we'll color those in green. And you'll see that the general trend here was, I mean, as you would guess, if I was off by a full 10%, is that I tended to underestimate how well I'd done on a board. So let's go to boards 11 and six and see why they were so much um, better or worse than we thought. And this is the exact same exercise I did, you know, back in LiveBridge, back when there were printouts on the wall. I mean, now everything, you can basically go to the Raleigh Bridge Club webpage and see all the, the data for a board. But I would just go right down my, my column in my, uh, personal scorecard and see which ones were off and then try to try to dissect it. And I, I think this is a pretty worthwhile exercise. Like some people have asked for small exercises that they can do. This one's a really good one that's paid off pretty well for me and my understanding of, you know, where the match points are coming from. It's just, you know, do this after every session you play and, and it just becomes a habit. Okay. So Board 11, I estimated zero. We actually got 56.5% of the match points. So that's a pretty big difference. If we go here to other tables, I think it'll show us the comparisons. Okay, so here's what the score slip looked like for this board. A, a reminder that we were in four spades down one. Um, I believe I actually maybe could have made this hand. It's, it's where I got trapped kind of without a, an entry to the north hand in four spades. I thought four spades was a really pushy contract. Like I didn't think people would be getting there. But if we look at the score slip, <clears throat> you know, there, there are a lot of people in four spades and also people in five clubs. I, I think I discounted that. Five clubs also goes down because you have to lose the two red aces and the king of clubs. And what you'll see is people went down two and three and three no trump. I, I guess I didn't even consider that people might be in three no Trump and that's just off the whole diamond suit. But everybody got higher on this board and had more trouble with it than I thought. So it actually turned out that, that just down one was 56 and a half percent. And I, I don't know, at the time, I just didn't think that people would be getting to games with, the, with these hands. And I actually was a little bit disappointed that maybe I didn't make the hand. And it turns out that was, that was an overreaction as far as my estimation goes. There is a lesson in this hand that, that's more general, which is um, sometimes holding it to down one when, when you've taken normal choices isn't as bad as you think it is. Like if you run into problems in a hand or if you thought a hand was tough, chances are good that other people are going to run into similar problems. So I think that's the lesson here. Let's look at the other one that we greatly, we vastly underestimated. It's board six. I thought we had an average minus. We actually had an average plus on it. So let's go back to my table. And board six. 
Okay, I went down in four hearts. I thought four hearts was pushy. Um, I did note at the time that I, I actually, actually had played the hand decently well, and I would be, you know, maybe beating people that were in four hearts and maybe tying people who didn't get the game. So let's look at the score slope here. And again, the field is all in four hearts, like literally 85% of the field here is in four hearts. And you'll see there's actually a down four. There's a bunch of down threes, a bunch of down twos. There's only three other down ones. And, and everybody got to game here, which surprised me a little bit. This is the one where I opened a spade and rebid three hearts. And I said, it was probably a, a very pushy uh, rebid. Now I did note that even if I'd just chosen a simple rebid of two hearts, probably the bot's gonna raise to three and I get a four, but I had way more field protection here in two different directions. First of all, everybody got to, to game basically. And second of all, nobody took more tricks than I did. And, and most people took fewer. So that's how we were off so far on, on that one. Board three is one in the other direction. I thought I did better than I ended up doing. All right, board three, we're in two no trump. This is the one where they led a diamond and the singleton king of diamonds was out there. Uh, and I got the heart suit right. This is the one where they won the king of spades, shifted the queen of hearts. And I actually chose not to go up with the king on the second round, the suit blocked. So I'm still surprised that this one is a little bit better. I, I had it as a 75%, it turned into a 53%. If we go to the other tables, there's actually some people making three, which Seems a little hard to fathom. Uh, and there's a couple people down in two no Trump, but, but basically everybody made um, eight tricks. If we go to just one person who made three and just for kicks and jollies, let's look at how they made three. And this is also just a tutorial on how you would click through the tricks here. So I assume that if the auction went two no float, all the bots would lead the same thing that they did on, on at my table where the auction was two no Trump float. I don't know if that's accurate. Like maybe there's some randomizing feature where bots don't always lead the same thing on the same auction. So let's see. Okay, they let a diamond to pick off the singleton king. And I guess this declare is just gonna run his diamonds. Play ace of spades and a spade. He shifted to the queen of hearts. And now abandoned ship, isn't that interesting? Huh? And now I guess he played ace in a club to end play west into leading a heart. Wow, I thought I did well. Okay, so again, a little surprised that 120 wasn't a better score than 53% here, but it is what it is. And board five, I thought we had an average plus and it turned into being 54. Let's see if we can learn anything there. Okay, we were in four hearts off the king of hearts and a diamond and a spade. That seemed like it was gonna be average plus. If we look at the score slip, uh, there were a few people down in four hearts, a few people down in three now, lots of people making four, uh, and actually some people made five. And again, we'll just for kicks and jollies, look, look at how they made five. So it was the same spade lead. And this person actually didn't take the heart finesse. That's interesting. Let a diamond. Roughed a loser. This is just roughing air. And then let another diamond away from the queen. So this person didn't lose a diamond trick. Um, you know, it, it's the butterfly effect thing. Again, you, you just never know what small deviations in the play will lead to cascading effects and other suits and all that nonsense. But that's one example. It just looks like a couple of people made three and and uh, not as, or more people than I thought made, got two and made four. So that explains like that 25% difference. Anyway, hope this review of yesterday's estimating exercise helps you come up with some ideas um, on how you can get better at estimating and what an, an auditing process the next day or, or when you have some time to take to review your results would look like. And it's my opinion that people are probably not spending enough time reviewing their past play. If, if we think about the amount of time we're spending on bridge as 
playing and certainly like there's no substitute for playing like play 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 but there's also got to be a certain ratio of the time you spend that's spent on reflection and going back and looking at past results and trying to do this autopsy like we're talking about here okay so hope this video helps have a good rest of your day i think that i'm going to do another video on the auctions and opening leads from last night's play but this has been auditing your match point estimation uh, exercise and hope you got some good tips from this. Talk to you soon.